and it's really floral as well. It's got so much going on. It's a, it's a complex wine. Hi everyone, welcome back to the Grape Explorer. I'm really excited about today's video. I'm gonna be going through an orange wine, full tasting coming up of this particular one. But first we're gonna look a little bit about the history about orange wine as well. If you're new to this channel, welcome. I'm the Grape Explorer. I do wine education, product reviews, and lots of wine tastings. So if you're interested in wine, consider subscribing. Orange wine isn't necessarily something I usually find on the shelf, so I went to the Wine Society to pick up this particular bottle. And before I open it, before I get into it, I thought it'd be useful just to give you a little bit of background information about what orange wine is, some of the history around the wines, and what we can expect from an orange wine in terms of aroma and taste. Whilst to many the concept of orange wine might be new, its history dates back thousands of years. And it was popularized thousands of years ago in Eastern Europe and particularly Eastern European wine producing countries like Georgia. Wines back then were made with whole bunches of grapes in these huge clay pots called quiveries. And we're gonna come onto those in a little bit more detail. The practice itself has more recently been made popular by Italian and Slovenian winemakers, although you can now find production in a host of other countries, including Croatia, Austria, New Zealand, and California. So it's really something that's gaining a global reputation as people are trying to seek out new styles of wine, something a little bit different to the norm. Now, like I say, when it comes to the production in Eastern European, they use these enormous clay pots called quavery. The vessels themselves are used for fermentation and it's the storage and aging of traditional Georgian wines. They resemble sort of large egg-shaped amphorae without handles and they can be either buried into the ground or set into the floors of large wine cellars. And they can really vary in size from as little as 20 litres going all the way up to 10,000 litres. And certainly if we think about wine production going back thousands of years, it's likely that they were picking everything they could find throwing it into one of these pots, which is why these pots are so large in size and quite a unique way of doing it. Orange wine is very much a natural style of making wine. So what are some of the processes that are involved? Well, the wine itself is made by leaving the grape skins and the seeds in contact with the pressed juice, which is creating and contributing to a deep orange hued finish. The wines are fermenting naturally without the aid of additional yeasts or other additives. And because of the skin contact on these white grapes, it can actually lead to a sensation of tannin in these wines. The results are in comparison to a traditionally made white wine that they have a tendency to be that little bit more mature and savory in terms of aromas and in terms of taste as well. And of course, it's the aromas that we concentrate so heavily on when we're doing wine tasting. So what might we expect from our orange wine today? Well, you can actually get all sorts of different aromas. I've picked out a few here, things like honey, peach, orange, you may get some nutty aromas, black tea is often associated, as well as those floral elements as well. So it really does run a whole host of different aromas, and that's why I'm so excited to get into this one today to see what this one has to offer. I wanted to open this one on camera today rather than have a drink of it first. I wanna see what my first impressions of this one were. And the one that I've picked out is from Bulgaria. It's from a producer called Vin Venera, and it's called their Bulgarian Heritage, and it's made from a popular Bulgarian grape called Dimyat. Now, Dimyat is one of Bulgaria's most widely planted white grape varieties. Wines made from this variety are often noted for their perfumed aromas, and many believe that this particular grape is actually indigenous to Bulgaria itself. And when the grapes are going through their horizon, through their ripening, they establish this fantastic coppery color on the grapes themselves, for which you're gonna get some of that color imparted into the wine with all of the skin contact. So the winemakers describe this one as having a beautiful pale orange color, an intense and juicy flavor. Now I completely understand it's always more important what is inside the bottle than outside, but I'm absolutely blown away by the design of this one. For first off, I love orange as a color. I think it's really striking on this bottle, and I think they've done a really fantastic job from a presentation point of view, which makes me just as excited to get into it to give it a taste. So let's do that, let's get into this one, let's get a feel for what this orange wine is all about. So, let's get this one into the glass then. Hope you can all see the color coming through there on that one. 
it is it has indeed got that orange look about it you know i would probably call that a real deep deep gold color um you know it's it is copper like actually i think that's a really good description to say copper uh, beautiful orange color in the glass so let's go through this one fully uh, as a tasting to see what we get out of it now like i say in the glass it's it's a it's got some real copper hues about it very deep gold but with a lot of orange reflections coming through uh, aroma intensity wow aroma intensity is medium plus i might almost push on to pronounce with this one it's it's got a fantastic bouquet about it but i'm going to give it a swirl so that we can start to pick out some of the specifics about this one Wow, it's, it's, it's incredibly complex on the nose. There were a whole host of things I got immediately. I'm gonna try and break them down by some of the different characteristics because there really is an awful lot going on in this one. The things that jumped out immediately to me, the things that, <clears throat> the things that jumped out really immediately to me were actually um, Brazil nuts and hazelnuts. So I got this real nutty aroma about it. And then from a fruit perspective, I'm getting things like apricots. And actually, it's got this sweetness to it. If you can think about something like sugar-coated Brazil nuts, that's kind of where my, my head's at in terms of the, the, the aroma sensation on this one. And it's really floral as well. It's got so much going on. It's a, it's a complex wine for sure. Really impressed with what I'm getting on the aromas here. You definitely get a sense of the, you know, the winemaking and those secondary aromas that are coming through. Those, those nuts for me are coming straight from the, the, the skin contact processes using the, these huge clay pots. Yeah, sugar-coated nuts is a really great way to describe it and it's accompanied by stone fruits as well. So let's give it a taste. It really has got a sensation of grip to it. You know, it's funny, it's, it's something you don't often expect from a white wine, that sensation of grippiness in the mouth. But it really has got that. The other thing is it's got really great acidity as well. Now for me on the palate, much more on the fruity side of the characteristics for this one. The flavour intensities are great. I'd say medium plus for the flavour intensities. Acidity is good, medium plus on the acidity. It's very rare that I describe a, a, a white wine as having tannin, but it has got that sensation of tannin. Not huge at all. I'm actually going to go low, but I can get a sense of tannin, which is unusual for a white wine, of course. Alcohol for me is, is quite low as well. I don't really get that sensation. It's incredibly easy to drink, but it's got that complexity about it as well. As for the length, the length for me is, is medium. It hasn't got a fantastic length about it. It has got something, it does linger, um, but compared to what I'm getting from this sort of acidity, from the flavor intensities, the length does take it down a notch or two. But overall, it's a really fantastic wine. You know, I don't drink enough orange wines. It's something that is, are not, like I say, not that easy to get hold of. Certainly not locally where I shop. But it's great that I'm able to order these online. Funnily enough, I went back onto the Wine Society website this morning to have a look and they'd sold out. So that talks to the popularity of orange wines at the moment. So if we were to go through this one as, as a conclusion, is it in balance? Absolutely. Fantastic aromas matched by the intensity of the flavors on the palate. Nothing feels out of balance at all. It has got a nice length, it just hasn't got a great length. So I'll probably give it half a mark for length. But it is intense. Everything about it is intense. The flavors really come through. And it's the complexity of flavors and aromas that come through as well, that I think makes this one really stand out. So for me, as someone who doesn't drink a lot of orange wines, I'm really loving what I'm tasting here. And I'm gonna have to say that this for me is an outstanding wine. I'm really enjoying it. I can see it's not gonna last long as I edit this video, but it's, it's absolutely wonderful and you know, it's fantastic that we are discovering 
you know, ancient styles of winemaking are being rediscovered and are being made more readily available. I think that's absolutely fantastic that we, we are doing that. So now it's over to you. What experiences have you had with orange wines? And please make some recommendations for one that you've really enjoyed. Let me know in the comments section below. For now, I'm going to enjoy the rest of this glass. I'll say cheers. I'm the Grape Explorer. See you again soon. Cheers.